Boy, do I have some gossip for you. I mean, granted, it is vintage gossip from the 1960s, but it's definitely relevant today because we are going to learn all of the beauty secrets from Miss Marlena Dietrich. And before I show you the newspaper clippings, I mean, the headlines are wild. Gossip columnist Luella Parsons, she interviewed Marlena Dietrich, and the way I'm saying her name is exactly how Marlena said it should be pronounced, that most people would pronounce it as Marlene Dietrich, but no, it was Marlena Dietrich, which is a little hard for me to get used to because I did always say it the wrong way. We know how to say her name. I'm sure you know who she is. The queen of the sleepy eye. I think a lot of people credit Marilyn Monroe, but it was Marlena who did it first. And actually Marilyn got some beauty secrets from Marlena, but I'll get to that later. Let's look at this newspaper headline because this kind of blew my mind. What have you got there? Makeup miracles preserve Marlena. Marlena Dietrich is basically unattractive from a photographic point of view, that is. This comes from makeup expert Wally Westmore. By the way, this is one of like five newspaper articles that came out during that time, basically telling all of Marlena Dietrich's beauty secrets on how she kept the face eternally snatched back up until her like late 70s. It's wild. Rubber bands plus wigs plus butterflies equal ageless sex, the story reveals. I did nothing of the sort. So the butterflies, I was like, what the hell are they talking about? But the butterflies, basically the way that she would position the light to hit her face, it would create this butterfly shadow under the nose and that's when she knew the light was right. But the whole thing with the rubber bands and the wigs, so before she is photographed, the story says, Miss Dietrich pulls her face taut with a network of rubber bands twisted around strands of hair at the hairline. Oh yeah. Okay, so rubber bands, braids, wigs. I mean, you know me, I'm gonna do my research. I really wanted to understand better how she actually did this. You see Marlena Dietrich, even in her 60s, the face is so pulled taut. I had always thought she probably just had plastic surgery, but no, she was doing all of this underneath the wig. So I was reading this book, it's called Crowning Glory by Sidney Giroff. I'm still not sure how to pronounce his name, Sidney Giroff, but this is the hairstyles to the stars. Definitely a lot of gossip in this book. Um, some of it, mm, questionable. <laughs> now he talks about the film Kismet and you can see him doing Marlena's hair in these pictures and she's definitely wearing a wig and it looks like her natural hair is like pulled tight, but it is 100% the wig because this wig actually went up for auction you can even see how delicate and refined the hairline is. The wigs back then, you couldn't clock them. They were perfectly seamless. Then he says, I didn't hear from her again until 1956 when she was slated for a cameo as a saloon keeper in Around the World in 80 Days. By the way, I paid like $3 to watch this film just to see her part. She's in it for like literally 10 seconds. In that, you can see the wig that she's wearing that he refers to and he says, I crafted a tight fitting platinum wig with ringlets cascading down her neck. By now, Father Time had begun closing in on her, but I knew that Marlena wanted to appear as youthful as she had in all those westerns. So I devised a series of tiny hooks and tapes that, hidden in the wig, stretched her skin taut. <laughs> to this non-surgical facelift, she really looked 20 years younger. On the set and ready to step under the light, she paused to whisper in my ear, Kaylorov, we really have cheated time, haven't we? She continued to use that hooked wig or one just like it throughout the rest of her career. I will say that Sydney takes a lot of credit for a lot of things throughout the book, but he did do over 1,500 films and was certainly one of the biggest hairstylists that we have ever had in the entire world, especially when it comes to film and celebrities of the past. So of course we have to try this. Now, while I'm not gonna turn into Miss Marlena, I am going to use some of these techniques to remove remain eternally youthful. But I'm also going to do some of her makeup tricks that I learned from her makeup artist Dottie Panettel in this book. I also learned another trick from a makeup artist Frank Westmore. And there are even some products, some makeup products from Miss Marlena on display in a museum in Berlin. So I kind of know what she actually used. And I'll reveal how Marilyn Monroe was completely inspired by Marlena Dietrich.
But first, I think I ought to do my hair before we get into these techniques. And also, I'd like to talk to you about today's sponsor. Now, I love creating characters, and this whole escapism into the vintage glamour world is a form of therapy for me. But it is not enough. You see, I have sort of touched on my tough childhood. I don't have the courage to tell you my whole story. I tell that to my therapist, which I actually found on BetterHelp, which of course is today's sponsor. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. By telling my therapist my problems and my issues, it allows me to bring my best self onto this platform and bring you fun videos, which maybe is a little bit of therapy for you. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you to the right therapist in their network. Now, if your therapist isn't the right fit, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. What I love the most is I can talk on the phone, I can video chat, I can text message my therapist. Yes, sometimes my social anxiety takes over and I just want to literally chat through text. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it is convenient for you. I found a therapist who specializes in my issues, which really made it easier because I have been through therapists in the past. If you don't understand this particular type of trauma or complex PTSD, it can make it a little bit more difficult. So being matched with someone right away who understood my issues was really such a wonderful service and it made it much easier and much quicker to find a therapist that was right for me. With betterhelp.com, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, slash Aaron Parsons. I've linked it in my description below to make it easier for you. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now, the real question is, should I shave off my eyebrows? I did it. I mean, we can't do Marlena without those thin, high arches, those super drawn on brows. I had to do it, but the truth is I've been kind of wanting my skinny brows back anyway, so I knew the day was coming. So I'm gonna do my hair because we have to do the hair first before we do these face snatching techniques I'm gonna show you. Okay, before I fully fix my hair, I just wanna show you some techniques that modern day celebrities and models use on the red carpet, in photo shoots, to give a little bit of a lift to the face. Take a little bit of hair behind the ear and you're going to braid this hair. So I'm really terrible at braiding, but I'm gonna just do like a little wrap, but basically you braid a small piece and this works best if the hair is long, so you connect the two pieces in the back, but literally, cause you're gonna cover with all of this hair and you can pull your face up like this. You see how it lifts the cheekbone down? Mm, that's the tricks, that is the tricks. And nobody's gonna know because you cover your real hair over this and then you connect it to the back. So you can do the same from this side. Do you see what that does? And that's just your hair. It doesn't actually hurt that bad, at least for the first couple of hours, but you'll definitely be feeling it. And if you did it every day, you'd probably end up ripping your hair out. So I wouldn't suggest that, but for like a picture or like an event where you just wanna give a little mm to the cheekbones, that is the best way to do it. So I have something else. I have actually been using these. I used them in a recent video. Uh, maybe you guys can guess which one because I'm wearing my wig in it and I am snatch back. We're going to use face tapes. You might be familiar with them, but basically they are tapes that you put on a rubber band and I'm gonna show you how to use them. So I actually have these in my kit at all times. Some people request, you know, so I have used them on celebrities before. Back to Marlena, the thing is with her is they talk about how they would pull the hair and do this under the wig and that can do so much. It can do up to a point. When Marlena was in her 60s and 70s, we gotta take it up a notch. We gotta go to the next level and that is where the face tapes come in. So my favorite ones come from Elcone Mark Trainer. I think these are 
the best on the market. On Amazon, I think it's really important you find the right tapes because I bought every one of them I could find and there were so many terrible ones. What you don't want is tape that is shiny. You want a very matte tape that totally blends in with the skin. Personally, I don't put any makeup over the tapes. I think that's the best way to keep them concealed, but I'll get to that. So Amazon, this one I think is the best for. If you wanna just start with something that is less expensive, you can get these particular ones on Amazon. What's great about the Mark Trainer is that they come already like pre-done. It makes it easy for you. If you have darker hair, you're gonna wanna use the darker rubber band. You have brown and you have blonde, depending on your hair color. When Sydney talks about it in his book, of course he does talk about tapes and face tapes go back a long time ago. They were doing this in Hollywood for years. So let's start with the face tapes. First off, you gotta have clean skin. Just remove any makeup where you're going to put your tape. Then use a little bit of alcohol just to take off any kind of moisture. That way the tape grips really well. I don't find any need to put prosade glue or spirit gum or anything under the tapes for myself. Now, also you're gonna wanna figure out where do you place the tapes. Well, for me, I'm gonna go full Marlana for this one. I want to snatch the entire face. So I wanna lift here. I wanna start there. If you know Marlena's eyes, she had a ton of lid space, which of course will accentuate with makeup. I also think I want to lift here at the cheekbones. <laughs> I'm like a puppet on strings. Okay, you ready for this? Let's see if we do it this way. So I actually shaved some of my hair off there so I could, the tapes were kind of pulling on that bit of the hair. So we're gonna put this hair down so you won't see anything. I mean, here's the tape, here's the tape. You can't even really see it on the skin, but we're gonna cover it with hair anyway. But already, there's that, and then we have this one here for the bottom. I'm in my 20s again. This is what it was like, snatched. So you wanna make sure that the tape, that the this metal piece is on the underside. So it's on the side that, you see how it's underneath the tape? This way you don't see it. It's actually quite hidden under there. Always wanna make sure that the metal piece goes under. With the Mark Trainer tapes, they come like this, so uh, the Amazon ones, you have to actually thread them together. So just know that it always goes under. Now this one's great because you see it doesn't curl up. A cheap tape will really curl up. It's like impossible to put on. So I'm gonna kind of go on top of the hair. I don't feel it pulling this hair. I just felt it down here a bit, but Again, what I'm planning to do is put my hair down. So I don't ever pull them tight right away. I just kind of push into the skin and allow that to sit. Eyebrow lifted, <laughs> part one. Okay, so now I'm gonna put one down here. You've removed any makeup, any moisture. I always alcohol that spot. It's actually kind of, it was a lot on the face. It goes all the way to here, but again, by the time you pull it back, then there's more cheekbone, and now, obviously, you will cover with your hair, so you'll never see it. For this one, we're gonna do under the ear. That particular tape is gonna connect to this piece here, so we'll connect it to the back. Okay, so my next step, I'm going to go ahead and start putting kind of a full beat of foundation on. I'm gonna use the Kryolan TV paint stick. That's close to like what Max Factor used back in the day, like the grease paint or the pan stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on and do like a flawless face. As far as the tapes go, you're going to want to part your hair where you're going to put the string through. I never do a very good job of this, but I'm gonna try really hard today, but I'm just gonna start to show you. So you're gonna pull through and then you will put your hair over so you don't see it. And you'll do the same with the other side and then you're gonna connect the two. So there is this circle here and then of course you have the tab here. By the way, if you're doing this on a model or on somebody, I always tell them to put their hands up like this because sometimes you're trying to connect the band in the back and it'll snap back and like <laughs> hit them in the eye. You don't wanna do that. So if you're doing it on somebody, have them hold their hands up and kind of hold the tape. I'm not gonna worry too much about the back because I'm not gonna see on camera, but obviously you wanna take better care if you are. So I'm not gonna do the tightest, I'm gonna do like the second, I think is gonna be enough. Now I suggest always putting a bobby pin right there just to hold it so it doesn't go forward if you're gonna put it that high up on the temples. 
by the way i should just mention that when you put this right above the ear it can get really painful so probably doing here is going to be better but i just felt like i really wanted to lift that part by the ear Okay, I'll do the same this side, be right back. Obviously no makeup on yet, but look how cold the face is. Do I look like a child again? So I've just done these vintage wave setter clips in my hair just to kind of tame it. It was a little wild and to kind of get a little bit of the waves like Marlena had. To do her makeup, first I've just started with a base. I, I still have my lashes on, but I will end up taking those off very soon. I just feel a little naked right now. So let's first get into her makeup artist, Dottie Pinettle otherwise known as Dot, which Marlena does refer to her in one of her books. You can actually find the ebook online if you guys want to download it that way. I love what she says. Dietrich was really something to look at. I did things in the eye, around the eye, changed her hairline. How else could you change the hairline? It must have been the wig, right? You do notice the forehead becomes a bit smaller. So she says, I added a subtle white line down the center of the nose, which brought the nose up in case it had any inkling of being flat. I definitely don't have that issue. My only inkling is being crooked. So I will probably do my usual nose contour, but I will put the white in the center to make it pop. I shaded the face when I wanted to get that hollow look. We're definitely doing that. In order to do that, you had to get a lighter makeup in the center of the face and get a darker makeup towards the temples. Then you take a light makeup over the lid of the eye and a darker grease toward the eyebrow, which gives your eyes a long full lid like Garbo. I love that there's always a reference to someone else. This was a wet rouge, so it would cake all of the makeup you had just worked on. You really had to know how to apply it. Another page, she mentions how Carol Lombard wanted that same white in her eye like she had done to Dietrich. I put white liner on the shelf of her eye, which gave it a clear young look, but she grabbed the liner and put it on a little more, which made her eye go blurry and she could hardly find the set. I think at that time they were using grease paint to put inside the eye. Hollywood and Kodachrome. This book is so fantastic. If you love vintage glamour and you wanna see high definition pictures, they show everything. So you can really see, even you can see she actually still had a tiny bit of brow hair, but you can see the grease on the eyes. You can see the shading, the white line down the nose, and even that full lush mouth. Okay, so Dottie said that she would shade the face to give it that hollow look and she would go up in the temple. And I'm still trying not to go over the tape. It's kind of amazing to know how much they actually contoured back then. There is like a Max Factor video where he's contouring a woman's face. He did it rounded to make the cheeks look round. But of course, Marlena, she really had this intense cheekbone. I'm gonna perfect the contour on the nose, but I went in with the TV paint stick, another Krylon, but this one is actually in TV white. This is my favorite white type of concealer. I mean, look at the coverage, but it almost has a pink, a pink tint to it. I love the TV white. So I went ahead and added that. Let me do a little more. And you can actually highlight any high points of your face with white. A lot of the stars did it. It's crazy because she mentions the full lush mouth. If you see in that picture, it is quite overdrawn. I probably don't need to do that much, but I'm definitely going to go bigger because I always do anyway. I went over. I gave it as much as I could. So far, I've only done a pencil. I'm going to do a lipstick, but at the museum, the one in Berlin that has a lot of Marlena's items. They have a lipstick. They have her entire makeup box and the lipstick there. Thanks to this amazing blog, she says it's from a brand called House of Gorelli. Now, Prince Gorelli was married to Helena Rubinstein and he came out with his own cosmetics. And this particular lipstick, this case with the bow is really hard to find, but her color was rose topaz and you can actually see it in this picture the exact color. So I am going to try to match that. But for now, I'll powder and everything first and then I'll come back to the lipstick. We have to do the eyebrow, the Marlena eyebrow. Dottie doesn't mention the eyebrows. You can see in some pictures that Marlena did have a little bit of hair in the front, at least later on, but it seems when she was younger, it was just completely shaved off like I have done. So I am gonna attempt to do this on camera. You know, my eyebrows are up really high and now of course I have all this space because the face has been snatched. So I feel this should be easy. I can kind of follow where my natural brow is. 
That skinny brow just makes it for me. Okay, so I love going right onto the foundation with the pencil because it's really easy to clean up any mess and then you can just start to go over and strengthen. The hardest part is matching this onto this side. I'm gonna do that off camera, but I will draw that on and then we have to powder the entire face. I still wanna do the eyeliner and the lashes. Okay, coming right back. So a lot of people say that Marilyn was inspired by Garbo and Garbo's eyeliner, but it proves in this book. This is by George Masters. This is the Masters Way to Beauty. Now, George actually did Marilyn's hair and makeup in the 60s, specifically 1962. He did a lot of that like bouffant, bubble cut sort of style, but he talks about her makeup here in this book. And he says, she loved Marlena Dietrich's eyes. So I had to learn how to brush a line here and there to give her that wide apart Dietrich look. Now he goes on to talk about how the eyelashes were a pain in the neck. And that will bring us to our next product. In the museum in Berlin, you can see Marlena's actual box of lashes. It is called Glamo Lash. Now, I do happen to have a pair of Glamo Lash lashes. These actually belonged to Mae West. Isn't that graphic cute? Inside the box, these were never actually open. They were never used by May. But you're gonna notice they're quite long. What George talks about in that book is how he would have to cut the lashes for Marilyn. So these lashes back in those days did not come pre-cut. You had to feather the lashes and cut them to your eye. From what I've seen in a lot of pictures of Marlena Dietrich, she wore very long eyelashes that tended to go towards the outer corner of the eye and almost sort of dip downward and create a shadow. So I went with pretty long ones. These are actually my last pair. They're called Kiss Ruffle Lashes. I do love these ones. They're a little bit of a pain to get in the corner, but I love the way they look. So of course, Dottie had mentioned the white eyeliner and I did add white eyeliner. I might do a stronger white eyeliner by the end. I went ahead and powdered. I went in with a lighter powder in the center and then a darker powder on the side. So now that I am fully powdered, Marlena was quite known for that very heavy lidded, very heavily shadowed eye look and shadowed in the crease. I love finding out about old vintage beauty techniques and tricks. So in this book, this one I found just randomly at a bookstore, but this is from the Westmores. This is from Frank Westmore. And he says here, now supposedly Marlena had taught them about the white stripe down the nose. So Marlene showed him another extraordinary trick. She took the saucer from under the cup of coffee she was drinking and held it about four inches above the tabletop. Then she lit a common wooden kitchen match and let it burn just beneath the bottom of the saucer. When she turned the saucer over, there was a black smudge of pure carbon in the indention of the saucer's bottom. She then poured a few drops of baby oil into the indention and with her finger mixed the oil with the carbon deposit from the match. With the same finger, she began to apply the mixture to her eyelid. She started just above her eyelashes where she allowed the black color to be the heaviest where I do the baby oil trick because it definitely looks like she has some gloss on her eyes and that coat of chrome. I'm gonna try with a brush and I'm gonna try to do that heavy lidded look where everything's in the crease just with carbon like let's try it. Oh <gasps> that's kind of pretty. Let's see if we don't pick anything up. I'm gonna do a little more of the carbon. That is so pretty. It's not even perfectly blended, but I don't think it matters. It's like giving the effect. Now I wonder what's gonna happen if then we take with a little bit of oil and dab it from lid to brow, if she keeps the darkness maybe more in the crease. The original smoky eye. Just mixing it up. Let's see what it does. <gasps> oh, lovely. In the Kodachrome book, she has like a brown shadow from the lash all the way up to the brow. So I guess she wasn't doing this trick anymore. So I actually went in with Revlon's Fire and Ice. I mean, this is a vintage reproduction and this one is actually very close to the original, of course, because I have the original. So I thought this combination of the sort of warm tone with the lip liner kind of matched it. 
I do like this combination together. I did have to add my beauty mark, although I think there are some pictures with Marlena in a beauty mark, but obviously she wasn't really known for it. So this is the Nymph blush, and this is by Ritual de Fee. It is a purely red color. Now, I know Dottie had mentioned her makeup artist. She would use the pads of her fingertips and just take a wet rouge and dab over the powder. Let's just try. I guess it would probably bring a little life back to the skin back then, you know? Oh, that's working. Look at that. <gasps> that just brings some life to the face. Oh, wow. That is really wonderful. That really does something. Now, I know Dottie said she used pink, but I figure the red does go slightly pink. There's one last thing, and it's Marlena's hair. Her hair looks like it's her real hair. So in this book, this is the Hollywood Max Factor. If you love vintage makeup, this is like holy grail. This has so much info. Favorite pages, of course, is Marlena Dietrich's wig. And what can you see in there? She used glitter. It wasn't just any glitter. She used real gold, powdered gold. Of course, you could pause to read, but they talk about how they comb it out and save it because it was so expensive. This was actually kind of the hair I was going to try to go for. We'll see if we can get there. But um, like I said, look at that wig. Like, do you see a hairline? Look how natural that is. Oh, it's just wonderful. So I will just take all of these out. I'm sure she felt the pressure to just always remain like a sex symbol, even as she got older. But you know, she looked great as she got older. She didn't overdo it. She stayed in shape. I don't know if she kept smoking, but like she looked great when you see her at this performance and she's in the Jean-Louis gown and the swans down coat. All she did was go on stage and she would just barely sing and barely move and <laughs> the whole crowd would go nuts. This is what a diva is. This is a legendary diva. So I have, it's called Musa makeup. It's like a vintage perfume atomizer. Ooh. Of course, Marlena's was real gold. Oh, that was a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Marlena Dietrich. star. I'm a movie star. Look at the shadow from the lashes. Lighting is everything. Let's try this side. Not as good. Not as good. We want to see how much did the tapes actually do. And I think it did a lot. Be right back. Now you know Marlena's secret to that eternally snatched back face. It was face tapes under a wig all along or braided hair and rubber bands, whatever it was, it was talked about in a newspaper, so it is public knowledge. Lies, all lies. But it really works and I will say, I'm gonna have a hard time going back to not face taping myself. Don't forget to check the link in my description, betterhelp.com slash Aaron Parsons to save 10%, especially if you are looking into therapy. It is such a great resource and totally online. So check the link in my description. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, as always, I hope to see you on the next one.